Hi and welcome to the Demalak Cookery Channel. On today's menu, beef bourguignon. Okay, so this is a classic French dish, but really easy to make. As usual, a full list of ingredients will be given at the end of the video. So let's have a look at those ingredients now and anything else we're going to need for today. So the ingredients for today's recipe, I've got 700 grams of braising steak, which has been cubed, 400 milliliters of beef stock, 300 milliliters of red wine, 300 grams of small onions, which have been halved, and 300 grams of baby carrots, which have been washed, and then the stalk end trimmed off. So any veg that you put into this particular recipe, just make sure it's nice and chunky because it will be in the oven for, for quite a long time and we don't want it to go mushy. 150 grams of plain or all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper, 400 gram tin of chopped tomatoes, and then just some olive oil to fry with. So the first job to do is to season our flour with the salt and pepper. And just mix that in. Next thing to do is to add the cubed beef. And make sure that the beef is coated well with the seasoned flour. So the reason we do this for something like a bourguignon or even with stews, well for three reasons. One is that we're going to be frying the beef off, creating what's called a Maillard reaction where we sear the meat and that gives us a really great colour to the meat but also intense flavour on the surface of the meat and also in the pan that we're frying it off in. The problem with the Maillard reaction or searing meat is that contrary to what some people believe, once we start searing the meat it actually causes the meat to lose water molecules and over a period of time when we're cooking something like a casserole or a stew in the oven over a period, a long period of time, that water molecule loss will mean that the meat will potentially dry out. So in covering it with the flour, what we do is we, we protect the surface of the meat. So although we still get the Maillard reaction, this searing, the flour acts as a little bit of a barrier and reduces the impact the searing has on the meat. The second reason we do it is the flour cooks through when we fry it and when the meat goes into the gravy or the sauce the flour acts as a thickening, th thickening agent. And then the third reason is the salt and pepper within the flour seasons not just the meat itself but also the dish that the meat is going to go into. So there's three really important reasons why we flour the beef before it actually goes into the, into the dish. So once we've coated the beef in the seasoned flour, the next thing to do is to fry it off. So choose a pan that's obviously big enough to hold all of the ingredients, but is also suitable for going into the oven with a lid on top. So in this pan, I've got five tablespoons of olive oil, which I'm bringing up to temperature. And just shake off the excess flour and just add the beef to the pan. And if you have to, just do this in batches. And what we want to do is once we've fried the beef off, we then want to reserve it in a bowl, keep it warm, while we prepare the rest of the ingredients for the beef bourguignon. So once we've browned the beef, as I say, we just take that out into a clean bowl 
and just reserve this to one side, just keep it warm while we do the rest of the dish. So once we've taken the beef from the pan, we've got all these lovely bits in the bottom. Don't worry about that, we're going to deglaze the pan to get all that flavour into the bourguignon. So I've added another maybe three tablespoons of olive oil to the bottom. And then we just add the onions. And we're just going to fry these onions very gently, just for a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes, just add in our carrots. And again, just cook these through for a couple of minutes. Okay, so after a couple of minutes, we'll still have some flour left from when we coated the beef. So just take a tablespoon and just sprinkle in two tablespoons of that flour and just cook that through for about a minute. Next thing we want to do is add the red wine. And we're just going to cook some of that alcohol out. Red wine gives a fantastic flavor to this type of dish, but it can be a little bit bitter. So cooking some of that alco alcohol out will greatly assist in reducing that bitterness. Okay, so after cooking that wine through for a minute or so, we now want to add in our chopped tomatoes. And again, allow that to cook through for a couple of minutes. That will also help to bring it back up to temperature. Okay, so at this point, the pan is now fully deglazed. So all of those bits have come away from the bottom of the pan. All that flavors now intensified this sauce. The next thing we need to do is to add our beef stock. Again, we're just going to cook that through, allow this to come back up to temperature before we add the beef. So now we're back up to temperature, we need to reintroduce the beef. What I'm going to do now is put the lid on top of this pan, reduce the heat down so it doesn't catch on the bottom and burn, and then I'm going to cook on the hob for about 10 minutes. Put the oven on to 170 degrees centigrade, wait till the oven gets up to temperature, and then this pan with the lid is going to go into that preheated oven. So that's beef bourguignon, really easy to do. One of those dishes which is ideal if you've got a really busy day and you just want to prep something, stick it in the oven and forget all about it. Of course, a dish like this is absolutely ideal for a slow cooker if you've got one of those. In fact, I would suggest it's probably better done in a slow cooker than it is in the oven. Please subscribe to the channel and as usual, if you've enjoyed this particular video, hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.